Yo, what's poppin' guys, Sizzle here, and this is gonna be a guide on how to self-host a Minecraft server that all your friends can join from all over the world on both the Java and Bedrock Edition for completely free with no port forwarding. So first things first, you need to install a few things to get this up and running. First off, you're gonna need Fork from Fork.gg. Just hit download and you will get ForkLauncher.exe. Next up, you'll need Via version. Uh, from Spigot here, hit download now via external site, and you will get via version 4.9.2.jar, or whatever version the current version is. Uh, then you'll need Geyser MC, where you have to download Geyser and download Floodgate, which will give you Floodgate and Geyser. And the last thing you'll need is the PlayGG uh, kind of tool. Now, you could try the newer version, like 0.15.11, but for me, that never works, so I'm still using version 0.9.3 instead. Uh, it should work just about the same either way. Uh, so first things first, we need to get our server up and running. So we're going to open up ForkLauncher.exe by double-clicking it, and it'll prompt us to make our first server. All right? So we're going to hit Create a Server, change it to Paper. Uh, when it says Choose a Server Version, you can choose whatever version of Minecraft you want. I'm going to use 120.4 because it's the most recent version. You can name the server whatever you want here. This is what you will see. Nobody else will see this. So you can actually have multiple servers via a uh, fork. So if you want multiple servers, you want to name this one more specifically. So I'll name this one like tutorial, for example. Uh, you can decide if you want to use a whitelist, what the server port will be and all that. And then just hit this green button here and it will generate your server world and everything. Uh, and then all you have to do from there is hit the run button and it will try to create the server by downloading the Mojang server jar, among other things. And it'll do all the setup for you, which is very, very nice. And this might take a while, though. And it also, sometimes it does fail. Uh, that's not something you did wrong or anything. You just have to hit the run button again in the bottom right if you get that failure. That happens sometimes because Microsoft or Mojang just denies your download request. And if you just send another request, normally the second time it goes through. Uh, so just common problem that you might run into and that's a common solution. Either way, I'll go cut to like five minutes from now when this part of the process is done. All right. Once you see that applying patches thing, it shouldn't take much longer for your server to be up and running. You can see it uses a bit more of your CPU in the creation process. But once it's done, it'll be good. There might be a few errors or whatever, but don't worry about them. And there you go. Once it says done, you actually already have a server that runs only on your Wi-Fi that Java players can't connect to. If I go drag over my Java install right now, go to multiplayer. And I look right here, you can see Minecraft server powered by Fork, a Minecraft server manager. And to see that, you just put the server address of zero. And that's this server right here. If I hit join server, you'll see right down here, Sizzle has joined the game. And it'll have a lot more data and IP addresses and you know, player IDs and stuff that you maybe shouldn't show in a YouTube video. So that's why that's censored. You can see, right, nice little jungle world here. I can, I can walk around, do things like normal. And uh, yeah. I go disconnect, you can see it says left the game. Very, very simple stuff and already working and has like this little front display. Right. So now what we want to do is stop the server to kind of do more configuration and eventually we'll work our way up to getting Bedrock up and running. But we want to do our next little change real quick. All right. Look through the server properties on here. See if there's anything here that you want to change. One of the things most people want to change is the message. Instead of powered by fork, we could have sub to sizzle. Instead of Minecraft server manager, I'm just going to have Minecraft server. And you know what? It's it's January. It's not really Christmas time. So I'm going to do change the server icon to this server icon. And you know, that all seems pretty good. Now if I hit run, it will apply those settings. Um, once it's up and running again, I'm going to kind of show that off. All right, there you go. Uh, once it says done, if I pull back, back my giant, uh, Java client, if I hit refresh, you now see new icon, now says sub to sizzle, a Minecraft server, and still has the zero out of 20 because that's just all the other defaults. And you see that part is just working beautifully. All right, next up, we're gonna go make it so that Bedrock players can join. Very simple process to add this in. Go to this little plugin thing down here, hit open in file explorer, and you will be given a folder that looks something like this. First off, drag all three jar files here that you downloaded into this folder. 
And then second off, go back one folder. So now where it says tutorial, because that's our server name. Go to server.properties. Uh, this this whole kind of way of seeing things might not look the same for you. Go to server.properties, left click it, right click it, hit open with, then a notepad. And now what we're gonna do is add in a thing that will let Bedrock players type in chat. All right, so it's actually not always here. It is here right now, which is great, where it says enforce secure profile equals true. We need to change true to false. If this is not here normally, you need to add this in. Sometimes it doesn't generate. Most of the time it does. Sometimes it's not there, but enforce secure profile, set that to false, then hit file and save and go close out of notepad, close out of this window. And now that you have your jar files there and you change that one thing, hit the run button and let it kind of install the plugins to the server. And you'll see it says done, but it's not actually done yet. Give it a sec to finish this thing and you'll see the actual message that you're looking for before you go stop the server again. Uh, but while we're waiting for this, since this does take a while, why don't we go set up our play it thing? And this is the thing that makes it not just on your Wi-Fi, but can access you know, that you can access the server from the entire internet. So you know, double click that to open. It'll say visit this web page. So go to your browser of choice and visit that web page. Uh, you might need to have an account for this to work properly. And if it doesn't work properly this first time and you don't because you didn't have an account, you can go you know, make an account. Uh, what you want to do is you'll say add new agent. You hit continue. Uh, you'll say an agent name. You can name it whatever you want. I'll just name mine PC. Agent type, leave it as default. Hit add agent. And then it'll do some like checks or whatever. Uh, and once that's done, it will have connected. And what it's doing when it's running like this is it's connecting to some other servers that will basically handle the connection between you and the other players on the server. Uh, and you can see play program is set up. What's next? Create tunnel. You don't have to do it uh, right like this. And for some people it might not look like this, depending on how the new software works, which I never really get to use. But what you do from here is hit create a tunnel, make sure public, hit create tunnel and leave the region as the free region. The tunnel type set to Minecraft Java and hit add tunnel. And we're going to go back to tunnels again while that's being set up and then add tunnel again and add one for Minecraft Bedrock as well. They kind of just let those run the background. And while that's running, let's go back to Fork. And you can see this is the message you want. Minecraft Jar, uh, guys, just pick it. Minecraft Jar has been successfully downloaded and loaded. Once you see that, you can stop the server because it ha now has the ability to be configured. All right, so now we're going to go to our plugin thing, hit Open File Explorer. And you can see we now have not the three jar files only, also the three config folders so via version or via version whatever you want to call it that's just a config yml floodgate has a config and a pem and then geyser spigot here has quite a lot but all we really care about is this config.yml which we're going to left click like before right click like before open with and notepad and you'll see quite a lot of things here which will make a little bit more sense as we go through it but the first thing you want to do before you forget is where it says auth type way down here. Set that set to online. Change that to bloodgate. And that will be the thing that just lets bedrock players join in general. But the next step is to actually get uh, these port values from play it. All right, so if we go back to play it GG, we go back to our tunnels, you can see both the tunnels are now set up. You can see our Java one is set to 25565. Our bedrock one is set to 19132. And if we look at our things here, our bedrock port is set to 19132. Our Java, which is just called remote port, is set to 25565. And uh, yeah, once that's all good, hit file, then save and close. Sometimes those values are different, which is why it's important to know. And now we should actually be able to join in from this IP that's specified right here. So we get our Minecraft Java thing. You can see we have our IP of catalog inquiry gl join mc dot link or just this IP address right here, which is tied to their servers. So our zero will still work because we're still hosting this on our local server as well. But if we type in this address, it should theoretically load. Oh, well, the reason it's not loading 
is because I didn't hit the play button on our server. So now if we hit the play button and the, the same thing happens and we go and refresh, we should be able to join, but you have to wait for it to actually load up. Look for that green message that says like, you know, you're good to go. It'll take a little bit longer now that we have Geyser Spigot set up, but not that much longer. You can see done, 8.7 seconds. If we hit refresh, you can see the local server is up and running. I can now join that very clearly, very directly. And that same jungle is there, so we're in the same world. I disconnect and I go via this connection, which I guess I can just copy paste instead of typing in manually. Then you will see, put in that. Now you can see that is showing up as well. And that's the more kind of indirect connection, which is connecting through them. And you can see connecting to server and we're in. This is through not the local connection, but the more remote connection. You can see it's the same server. I can walk around and all that same type of stuff. Beautiful. And while I have this going on, why don't we go do the Bedrock half, right? So I have my Bedrock client here. What we first want to do is go back to our tunnels, go to the one that says Minecraft Bedrock, and look at the top of the screen once it loads. Sometimes it takes a second. Sometimes you have to refresh. This time we did not. And you'll see that same little IP address with a different port. So you want to go write that one in on your Bedrock client. Uh, which I'm going to go do right now real quick. Or you can see that's still open. Bedrock client. Hit play. Servers. Add server. Name it whatever. I'll just name it like test. Because that's what we're doing right now. We're testing stuff. Type in the server IP address. Like the numbers preferably. But the link also should work. Like the top part where it says, you know. UN generation or all that. Uh, then the port, set it to the port on the bottom there and hit play. And you can see generating world, locating server, and you will see, uh, there we go. My bedrock client is in as well. There I can see myself in Java. If I go, oh, fell down a little bit. You see, I can see myself in Java. I can see myself in bedrock, right? It's all working handy dandy. We look back at fork you can see dot sizzle has joined the game because what it does with a bedrock player is in order to make bedrock players work it adds a little dot in front of their name uh that's how they're separate you could even see it has the bedrock skin kind of converted to a java one uh, it's not exactly one-to-one -one. some skins look the tiniest bit off but you see this one's about right right if i go in uh, f5 here you can see that's actually not what you see as the bedrock players sometimes but a lot of times if this is a problem for you Simply saving and quitting and rejoining the server will fix that. But I can go show both of these uh, accounts typing in chats and, you know, hitting each other and stuff. Or you can see there's me writing tests. Once the better account is back in, I can do that as well. Or I can write tests. And there you go. You can see both of them can type in chat. I can go hit myself like off this tree and it's working pretty beautifully it's a little bit laggy because i'm running two things in minecraft and the server all on the same computer but you can see the java version buttery smooth right, i can hit myself taking the damage right, if i do like trip myself out i can even get the kill and yeah this is all you need to do to make this work for your friends right, you know what ips to say uh kind of send them and all that let's see i died i was slain by sizzle can respawn everything's working just fine Lighting thing is more of a bedrock problem <laughs> than anything to do with the server. Yeah, you can write in chat, you can kill other people, you can write messages on them, you know, like below. Right, your inventory and all that works just fine, just like normal. And that's actually all you have to do to make the server run. Uh, I will mention for console players, you do have to do some extra jank stuff. There's like a separate app or something you have to do to connect directly. But for people using bedrock on Windows 10, or just using Java, this is all you need to know. I will link a video to help do that in the description since it's something I don't really know how to do since I don't have a console to test it on, but I know other people that have consoles that have played with me through the servers that I've hosted myself and they've gotten it to work through that method. So I'll, I'll link down the description for those who are having troubles joining through console. You can see it works beautifully. Uh, for those of you on mobile, apparently it just works for you the same way as on PC. But basically, uh, for people on console, you have to do some weird stuff with the DNS. And then when you try to join one of the official servers, it'll pop up with the same type of menu where you can connect a server. 
and you can kind of type that stuff in and actually join a custom server that way. I, like I said, I will link this guy's video in the description so that you'll be able to join the server that you just made or that friends of yours will be able to join servers you just made. This guy explained it in very clear detail in four minutes, so go watch that video if you're one of the people on console and not phone or PC. Uh, and, and that's really all there is to say. Hopefully you guys found this useful. Uh, let me know if you did by leaving a comment in the description. Let me also know if there's any other problems you're having or something. I can try to help you figure that stuff out. And uh, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed and have a great rest of your day.